Hey guys. So, uh, it's Thursday and it's another distance day. Uh, we've been told that we don't necessarily need to do uh, synchronous learning. In fact, they're kind of telling us shy away from it because of power outages. Um, I'm going to put this out um, in case you're able to see it. Uh, what I want to do today in this video is honestly just kind of go over some terminology um, and talk about how we talk about enthalpy. Uh, remember, enthalpy is the heat of the reaction, uh, this kinetic thermal energy. Um, it's a little bit more than that, which I'll get into to this in a little bit. But uh, as far as what we're going to be doing today, uh, I want you guys to, today and Friday, um, go through, watch this video, uh, watch uh, the unit 6-1 video and then do those topic questions um, for that. That is all we're going to be doing. Uh, I'm going to go through, um, kind of take this a little bit slow because of the everything going on. Um, yep, that's that. All right, so let's actually get into some, some chemistry. Uh, enthalpy. Again, enthalpy is the, uh, what we call kind of the heat of the reaction, the energy of the reaction. So let's talk about what energy actually is. Uh, it, that it, it, energy is the capacity to do work or create heat. Now work, you may think, oh yeah, I know what work is. It's, uh, you know, when I have to clean my room and blah, 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 blah. It's yes and no. So work specifically means moving something from one place to another work uh and this is or create heat heat we've kind of talked about a little bit we know that thermal energy is kinetic energy molecular kinetic energy remember that molecules uh atoms particles can do one of three things they can vibrate they can rotate and they can translate translational motion they go from one location to another um Vibrational, rotational, translational motion. Uh, so that is kind of what we see or what we perceive as heat. Okay. So if we want to know the change in energy, then we can look at the heat. Or either heat is being gained or lost. And then we can see what kind of work is being done. Is any work being done on uh the system uh, and one thing to remember is energy in the universe is constant so um, we cannot gain or create energy or uh, we cannot create or destroy energy energy is always moving from one thing to another so I said it before system system versus surroundings uh, being a scientist is great because we can kind of just define things and say this is it uh, so in a similar way, we can define a system as anything. Uh, basically it's the thing we are interested in. If I am talking about a beaker with a solution in it, my system is the beaker and the solution. There we go. And then everything else around it is the surroundings. Okay. So we can kind of do that. If I was talking about, I don't know. Um, let's say that I was a, a botanist and I was looking at a tree. This is my really crappy version of a tree. Uh, the system I could be talking about is this branch. And then everything else in the trees would be considered surroundings. Um, whatever we are interested in, we consider that to be the, whoop, we consider that to be the system. Everything else around it is considered surroundings. And when we talk about energy change, that means we're moving energy from the system to the surroundings or from the surroundings to the system. Uh, where is the energy going in relation to those two things? And we we want to make this very, very simple. So we just want to say 
here's the system, here's the surroundings, where is the energy going to? So if we were thinking about something like, uh, it's cold out right now, so let's talk about this. If I'm talking about the energy change of my house versus outside my house, I consider my system to be the house, all right? Now, if we look at that, we wanna make sure there's as little energy change as possible, that way I keep all the heat inside and I don't lose any of the heat to the outside of the thing. Now, another person may consider, well, you know what? I want my system to be the heater and the surroundings to be the house. That's a different way of looking at things. Now you're thinking, okay, no, no, I want a high amount of energy change going on. I want my heater to be putting out heat. So this is just an example of, of um, system versus surroundings. We can define system as whatever we want, uh, whatever is useful to us. All right. Um, one cool thing I like to like to say is that, you know, energy is everything. Everything is energy. Uh, I am energy. You are energy. Uh, this coffee cup is energy. It's just condensed energy. Um, so we know that mass is energy. This guy figured it out, Albert Einstein. So it's uh, energy equals mass times speed of light squared. Um, basically, mass has a certain amount of energy. Um, or I should say, mass is a certain amount of energy. If we were to break down mass, we would get a bunch of energy. You guys are probably familiar with this. And I definitely know that the you know citizens of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are very familiar with this. It's, this is uh, Chernobyl, very familiar with this. This is kind of where we think about like nuclear energy. Anytime we start breaking down mass, that's whenever we uh, start seeing a large amount of energy being released. Um, but we're not gonna really worry about the mass side of things. What we're gonna be worried about is thermal energy. So thermal energy, again, you're, you're familiar with this now, movement of atoms, okay? Um, you don't need to know these terms, but they're good terms to know. Like if you're just interested in like, man, Dr. Stobie, I wanna get a five on the AP exam and that's all I care about. You don't need to know these terms for that. But I'm, I, I'm a teacher, I gotta teach you things. <laughs> and uh, today is kind of a light day anyways, so let's gonna do some things we don't, really need to remember um, so there's different ways of thinking about thermal energy change okay so if atoms or particles are bumping into each other and transferring energy similar to uh, like you know like you, you we've seen those simulations where some of the particles are moving fast they bump into something and then now they're slow and the thing they hit is going fast uh, that would be a transfer of energy. If our system was an atom, that atom, we transferred energy from the system to the surroundings. So if we have that, that particular thing is called conduction. The term for that is conduction. All right, now, if atoms are moving quickly to, from one location to another, we call that thing convection. So again, like this uh, boiling pot of water here, we have very hot water at the bottom. These start moving very quickly uh, and then move up and around. Uh, that is called convection. So if you uh, know like convection ovens, it's because we have hot air traveling around. Okay. Um, then uh, atoms also emit energy waves, uh, a very easy way to think about that you know it's radiation we talked about that before uh anything uh that radiates energy radiating from a single point is called radiation so um a fire radiation it radiates heat uh again we all measure this in kelvin i think we've kind of learned about Kel kelvin in the uh gas law unit okay and then there is also chemical energy. Energy is stored, uh, eh, this is a bad way of saying it, but uh, 
uh, one way of thinking about it is energy is stored in chemical bonds. I don't like saying that. It's not technically true. Um, all right. So when a bond is formed, it releases energy. This is a little bit counterintuitive. Usually you think, oh, I need to put work into something to create something. No. No, that's not it. When bonds are formed, they release energy. And when they are broken, they, um, you, uh, you, it, they absorb energy. It actually takes energy to break the bond. And it uh, releases energy and puts out energy whenever they are formed. Uh, and this kind of makes sense. We've seen this before. You guys remember this lovely graph, right? This is distance distance and this is the bond length so if I'm moving from two things that are close together in a bond and I split them apart what's going on with my energy energy is going into the system this is an endothermic process uh, so uh, when bonds are broken, they require energy. It absorbs uh, uh, the, the thing. The system is gaining energy. You have a positive delta H. Um, there's that. If we are having two things that are very far apart and you move them this way, and now they are uh, I have a bond between them, energy is going down. Uh, energy is going uh, from the system or from the surroundings into the system. It is. Uh, um, oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. It's going um, from the system into the surroundings. It is exothermic, exiting the system, losing energy, negative delta H. Uh, there are, you may have noticed, I keep saying this over and over again. Um, different terms for saying the same thing negative delta h lose system is losing energy release of energy exothermic exiting energy uh there's that uh here are some examples of bond energies so if i were to make a hh bond then it would release 436 kilojoules per mole uh, of that uh, joules I think we've talked about joules um, if not we'll get into it but joule is our uh, is our energy J uh, it's a unit of energy more joules you have the more energy you have all right so there's that uh, we talked about work right energy is heat and work well here's the thing when we're talking about chemical energy, delta H, this enthalpy, then yes, we're gonna be talking about heat. Heat is our Q. And the work, how do we move things? How can you have a chemical reaction move things? So think about things like a combustion engine. What's happening? You have a, you know, a, a piston, right? And you have gas in here and it explodes and it increases the pressure and changes the volume and pushes this piston up and that drives your car forward. That is how it works. So whenever you're talking about chemical reactions and chemical energy, the way that we handle work is pressure and volume. Now, some of you guys may be rolling your eyes and thinking, ah, oh, geez, I'm gonna have to think about pressure and volume in this as well. Here's the great part, guys. As long as these stay the same, we're good. We're good. We can just, we don't have to think about this anymore as long as they stay the same. So as long as pressure and volume are the same, we're good. We don't have to do anything. We just done. All right. So, uh, when, if you are going to be like a chemical engineer and like design rocket fuel and stuff and whatnot, then you'll have to think about pressure and volume, but you guys are just baby chemists. All right. So there's different ways of actually calculating uh, delta H. Uh, there's something called calorimetry. Uh, here's an example of it. Basically, you got a reaction. 
Uh, you can use it. You, we'll, we'll make this. It's a it's a couple of coffee cups and a lid Ooh. and a thermometer. You gotta have a thermometer. But anyway, uh, basically the reactions in here, the the um, cups, the styrofoam cups will keep all the heat inside, and basically that means that there's two things going on in here that we're we're gonna think about again. Remember, it's the system and the surroundings. So our system is going to be whatever the reaction that we're doing in this solution. And the surroundings is going to be the water. Okay. All right. Uh, we can estimate delta H. Oh, uh, sorry. Let me go back to the experimental stuff. Um, so experimental. Uh, how do we actually – we do the reaction in this we see what the thermometer does. Basically, we're measuring the temperature of the water. So we're going to see if, the, th uh, if uh, the water gets hotter. That means the water gained energy. That means that the reaction lost energy. And that means if the reaction is losing energy, energy is exiting the reaction, then it is an exothermic reaction. Okay, now if uh, the water gets colder, if the water gets colder, then that means that energy was absorbed by the reaction, energy entered the reaction, it is an endothermic process, uh, so there's that. All right, and we can take this, this uh, th the thermometer in the actual temperature, and we can relate that back to kilojoules. All right, so. Another way we can do that is estimate it by using uh, these bond energies. I'll go into the process of that later. And again, I talked about Hess's law and um, enthalpy of formations. Uh, and there's also calculating. And this is going to be uh, uh, specific heat. Don't worry about this right now. I'm going to go over this later. This is going to be, again, this is just kind of, again, o an overview of what we're going to be talking about. Um, State functions. State functions are fun. Here's the thing. If we're doing a lot of different reactions, like a lot of these elementary steps, or honestly, if we're just doing one reaction and then another reaction and then another reaction all in a row, um, here's the cool thing. If I start here and I did this reaction and then I did this reaction and then I did this reaction, my total energy change is all of them added together. Now, you may be thinking, uh, duh, of course. Uh, but here's the cool thing. I can start here. Uh, let me draw this out. Go down to this guy. Go up to this guy. And then go down to this guy. And if I add these all up, it, it equals the same thing. It doesn't matter the path you take. I can go all of this. Uh, it's still going to be the same thing. Uh, I could just go straight from here to here. It's still the same thing. That's what we're saying with state functions. All right. <coughs> That's it, guys. Um, hopefully, uh, this kind of, uh, these kind of overviews let you know what's coming up in the future. Um, we'll get in on this in earnest Wednesday. If, if, if all goes according to plan, we're back Tuesday. We'll take our FRQ Tuesday and then, um, and then keep keep going in earnest on thermodynamics on Wednesday we'll find out I, I'm I'm living hour to hour all right have a good one guys <laughs>